Hi and welcome to another Watch Geek video. Today we get to take a look at two watches Spinnaker sent me, the SP5065 REC and SP5067 Sorento. So we'll start off with the specs. The REC has a diameter of 44mm and a lug to lug of 50. The thickness is 136 which makes it pretty regular for today's dive watch size. The Sorento, although pretty much the same when it comes to specs, with the diameter of 43.5 and slightly shorter lug to lug of just under 50, somehow wears bigger, probably thanks to a slimmer bezel and larger dial. Both are powered by entry level Japanese automatic movements, with the REC coming with Seiko NH35 movement that beats at 21,600 bph, comes with hacking and hand winding and has a quick set date function, while the Sorento comes with Miyota 8218 that has a small seconds dial but lacks hacking. Both are no frills movements that you can expect to work reliably for years, but don't expect wonders when it comes to accuracy. The size and movements is where the similarities stop and these watches take two completely different style paths. REC is a diver styled watch so it comes with a unidirectional bezel, large loomed markers and hands for easy time telling in all conditions. It also features a distressed look that seems quite popular these days. So the case, bezel insert and even dial are all scratched up from the factory. Think worn out ripped jeans to get the picture. I guess Spinnaker is trying to tap into the market of those people who like to get vintage watches with a lot of wabi-sabi, as they call it. When you think about it, it kind of makes sense, as getting a vintage watch that looks, I mean a vintage dive watch that looks like this, will almost certainly mean a questionable water resistance to say the least. With this, you get the look, but get functionality of a brand new watch. So I'm sure there is a market for this model, but that market is definitely not me. I'm a vintage watch collector and I don't buy into the whole character aspect of a watch with scratched up case and patina on the dial and hands. To me those watches are just watches that were not taken care of. When I see people orgasming over a tropical dial on a vintage Omega or Rolex, I think of the bad watchmaker that forgot to seal it back properly, allowing moisture to ruin it. I'm not saying I'm right, buy what you like, but I personally spend weeks and months trying to find vintage watches in as good a condition as possible. So an idea of buying a new watch that has a damaged look just doesn't make sense to me. I would however like to see a regular, undamaged version of this watch, as I find the case pretty interesting with these curves on the sides. It is a very comfy watch on the wrist as well. So if this watch had a brand new look, I would like it, but like this, it simply isn't for me. The second model taps into yet another emerging style market, and those are wooden watches. When I see a new ad on Facebook of yet another brand making a cheap $5 wooden watch, I just sigh and move on. So I got this in my hands with the preconception of hating its guts. However, after spending some time with it and looking at the details, I was pretty surprised to find myself liking it. I think it's down to the fact they didn't overdo the wood theme. Unlike those Facebook brands, this is made of stainless steel with just the bezel insert and details on the dial being made of wood. The wood used is genuine rosewood that comes from a sustainable source. The grain, the grain and color of the wood are interesting and I like how they work with gold colored hands and markers. Overall, this watch has an aura of elegance with a hint of playfulness. I really wanted to hate it, but I guess I actually like it. The case on this is IP coated in black and it has a combination of brushed and polished finishes. It is okay looking, but kind of boring compared to the shape of the wreck. Luckily the wood theme makes it more interesting. The Sorento has been on sale for a couple of weeks now and is priced at $310 or $248 if you use my discount code WATCHGEEK20. The rack is officially coming out on March 22nd and will be priced at $280 that you can again drop to $224 using my code. So both watches 
take on some growing markets when it comes to watch styles. And although I personally don't belong to any of those markets, I'm sure Spinnaker will be selling these like hotcakes. When it comes to value, with the discount codes, they're an okay proposition. But I don't like the fact Spinnaker has started cutting corners on the crystals by moving from pure sapphire to sapphire coated mineral. I hope they go back to using sapphire as I never liked the idea of laminating two different crystals together. Anyways, this completes this week's review, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and found it useful. If you did, please like and subscribe, and until the next video, bye.